we're going to take a look at the last collect and connect figure from DC Universe Classics. Series 20, it's Necron. The big bad behind the whole Blackest Night storyline. This is kind of, kind of sad. He is going to be the last collect and connect figure that we get from Mattel in the DC uh, Superheroes DC Universe line. Uh, the retail line is moving on to a smaller four figure waves and they will not have any collect and connect pieces included with them. We may get, there may be some oversized figures that would be uh, a collect and connect figure if they were part of a, a retail line in the DC Universe Club Infinite Earths um, subscription service from MattyCollector.com. So, you know, I know there's going to be some larger figures in that line, about three uh, with each year. Uh, this is the freshman year of the subscription with the first figure shipping in April. But enough about that, let's get into Necron. Necron here is a very nicely sculpted figure. He's got a wonderful, wonderful zombie-esque skeleton looking head here with that those I really like those piercing blue eyes and the detail on the teeth and the nose and uh, I like the shape of the skull you can see the black lantern symbol on his head he's got this nice collar and chain uh, real chains, real metallic chains. He's got a kind of a longer one on this side and a short one on this side. He's got one on this sort of manacle that's been cut off or broken, I guess, uh, from somewhere. I don't really like the color of the skin here it doesn't exactly match up to his arms or his head here uh, but it is still sculpted very nicely and it's got this open rib cage and you can see his black not really black heart here it is made of a different material here a little bit rubbery material um, but it is glued in there. At least I can't get a hold of it to pull it out. Um, it'd be kind of cool if it did come out. His arms are very nice and lanky. Um, got a lot of nice detail on his robe here. That's got weathering and, and rips and tears and holes at the bottom. And it goes up, there's some holes painted in here, uh, some tattering on the shoulders, uh, very nicely done. You have this little, I can say belt or uh, front piece here that is very reminiscent of the Black Lantern symbol. And yeah, got the triangle and the four uh, rays coming out of the triangle. Now here it's five, but um you know you get the idea. The legs are where the sculpt kind of takes a turn for a worse here. They're kind of banded. Well you know they are banded here. It's a very glossy black here. I wish they would have gone with a more matte kind of a finish here at least until the boots started um, and the boots are kind of 
you know, they're, they're painted very nicely with this silver, uh, but there is some slop there. Overall, the paint is nice. You got this sort of decaying flesh gray, not too gross or uh, gory, uh, but it it does signify that it is dead tissue. Uh, you got some nice black painted fingernails there. Again, the painting on the you know the paint on the face. Very nice with the blue eyes and the teeth and the nose. Nice. As for articulation, this head is pretty articulated. Can look down, up, and not so much up, but very low a down there. Uh, left and right, of course. His arms do go all the way around. You gotta push his little. Um, top part of his robe up and around but it does get out of the way and that's nice and it just tucks right back into the top of the belt there so that's pretty nice to you know, really sell that point that it is that the lower part and the upper part are the same piece um, he does the arms do go out and in very nicely he rotates the bicep, and he's got the double joint on the elbow. My figure, however, uh, this was extremely tight. Extremely tight. So tight that I had to take an X-Acto knife and really kind of shave off some of the plastic in there to get this to move at all. I don't know if you can see some of the scratches that are left on there. Um, I had to do here at the elbow to a little bit and, and down there as well just to free that up to uh, this same level that it was over here. And now this I had no problem with. Now his wrists here do rotate and bend in and out. Let me talk about the big disappointment for this figure. Initially, he was supposed to have his huge scythe, which would, you know, just even more signify his sort of Grim Reaper status. People were excited to get that. Unfortunately, the scythe that they had in the promo pictures uh, did not make it to retail. That is very disappointing, especially since his hands are closed up to hold that item. I'd much rather have a figure whose hands were maybe open or, you know, in some sort of, you know, angry hand pose or, you know, something something else rather than this useless position now that we don't have the item that they're molded specifically to hold. Getting back to the articulation, because of his hole in his chest, he doesn't have the ab crunch. He still has the waist articulation left and right. Uh, his legs do go forward and back. Uh, the robe here is very soft and, uh, you know, made of that rubberized plastic here um, that does get out of the way very nicely. His legs do go out to the side. They rotate at the thigh. And they've got a double knee joint. And his feet do go forward and and back a little bit. Uh, one other thing, uh, this may not be the case with everybody, everybody's figures, but when I got my Necron, uh, both both legs were kind of, and you can still see how they're kind of bent a little bit 
down here. So that is something to watch out for. I don't know why that happened. It's just maybe the way they packaged it. Again, uh, you know, a common problem with Mattel figures is the packaging, bending limbs, and just the limbs were too uh, thin here. You know, then then normally a built you know collecting connect figures limbs would be so they just uh you know bent during the packaging process getting into a little bit of history of necron and necron first appeared in tales of the green lantern Corps number two in 1981 he's an embodiment of death but a certain kind of death in the DC universe, death has many different aspects, I guess you could say. Different avatars, if you will. One of them being the Black Racer, which is more like the inevitability of death. You have the uh, the Sandman, uh, Vertigo, death. Which is more like the death of mercy or compassion or death as a release you know moving on to the next uh plane or, or whatever escaping uh pain and heartache uh for something better i guess necron represents death as an opponent why well, I, I guess that means is is the needless death uh i guess you could say so anyway, his first appearance, Krona the guardian who went nuts because he went saw the beginning of time, uh, he was banished into uh, an energy form. And Necron in his nether world uh, saw this, the banishing of this energy form of Krona. And somehow he could you he used it to see the living world and he wanted to get into the living world at uh, the DC universe regular world and um so he recreates Krona as an undead zombie like being it gives him an army of undead people, uh, aliens, whatever, and sends this uh, version of Krona out to kill all the Guardians, and uh, which he's going to then be able to use the power of the battery to enter into the living world. So uh, Hal Jordan is the Green Lantern at the time, and he rallies the Corps the the core to fight Necron and so that Krona was defeated and Necron was prevented from entering into the living world. He's seen a couple of times uh, since then, uh, not too much. He battles Nebrios, a demon in the DC universe, uh, when Doctor Fate's tower is destroyed for the first time. Battles with Kyle Rayner using deceased Green Lanterns uh, who are under his control. Kyle is able to free the Lanterns from his control and they rise up against him and send him back into his land of the undead. He's also seen when summoned unwittingly by a spell worked into a song by the superhero slash pop star slash uh celebrity witchfire and witchfire is from the power company a very small underappreciated series from the late 90s early 2000s um and witchfire is able to defeat him with the help of Wonder Woman's aid, and Wonder Woman just happens to be in the audience at the time, and they send him back. And of course, he 
then makes his grand appearance in Blackest Night, uh, finally being revealed as the big bad guy behind all the resurrected Black Lantern zombies. Will we see a Necron in the New 52? Uh, I don't know. You know uh, possibly. Anything, anything can happen. But who knows? So, uh, I mean, I'm really, I think a lot of people are going to say this, really feeling the loss of the Scythe. I don't know why they didn't include it. You know, it seems like a no-brainer, but uh, they did. So, kind of disappointing way to end the Collect and Connect series of figures. So, I, I guess that'll be it uh, for Necron and all of Wave 20, Series 20 of DC Universe Classics. And the last... This is the last DC Universe Classics review. Wow, that that's that's you know the end of an era. But stay tuned because I will be getting the subscription figures from Club Infinite Earths or Infinite Earths Club or whatever they call it from MaddieCollector.com, and so I'll be getting figures of those, and I'll be Picking and choosing figures from the DC Universe All-Star line. I'll still be getting DC characters from Mattel. So until my next review, I'll see you.